Hi everyone, I'm Noel from creationeffects.com and this is the tutorial for using horses for Adobe After Effects. Uh, just a little backstory on this. Uh, this template is part of the Beast series I've been working on. And I have some other products that let you do uh, 3D flocks of birds and insects and fish. And they're very popular, so I decided to revisit this old idea I had of doing land animals in After Effects. Um, I abandoned the idea a long time ago because I decided it couldn't be done. But then I started thinking, well, sure it can, if it's 2D. So this is the result, and uh, it wasn't easy to make. I love a good challenge in After Effects, but this one nearly drove me insane. Um, I initially wanted to do a uh, beast package with like 30 different animals, because I thought I could make about two a week, but nope. Turns out each animal takes about a month, so. And you can see the other ones at creationeffects.com. I'd love to make more and create a package deal now that I'm better and faster at it, but that'll all depend on how these ones perform. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about horses. Uh, these are 2D puppets, essentially, with a bunch of preset movements to choose from, or you can move them manually using the controls. So these are perfect to have in the background of your 3D scenes, or uh, for motion graphics, or maybe as characters that you animate. I'm going to start by showing you how to use the effect in the simplest scene possible, just to give you an idea of how it works. And then I'm going to explain the effect and kind of summarize how it's made. Then I'll explain some basic rules for duplicating horses or copying horses into a new comp. And then I'll go into customization. I'll go over the uh, primary actions and how to transition from action to action. And then I'll go over the uh, secondary actions. And lastly, I'll have some helpful tips on using the horses. All right, but first, real quick, let's go over how to open the zip file correctly. If uh, you're on a Mac, you can just double click that bad boy. Uh, if you're on a PC though, uh, you need to right click the bad boy. Or maybe it's a good boy, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. And you're gonna look for an option that says extract all and you'll click that. And uh, that should prevent errors uh, in After Effects. And then just open up the folder, and this is the file you're looking for. Just open that up in After Effects. Or, if you're already working on a project in After Effects, you could just import the file into that project. And just go to File, and Import, and File. And uh, you can choose that AEP file and just open that up. And that'll put it all into this nice little folder inside the project panel. And when you first open it up, you should see these instructions. Uh, there are three rules here that have to do with renaming layers and copying layers to other comps, and these are pretty important. Uh, I'm going to go over those shortly. But now, let's uh, just create a very simple scene, uh, just so you can see how this works. I'm going to open the Horses folder, and we've got five different coat colors here. I'll just choose a Pinto horse. I'll play it back. So by default, it's just walking, um, but we can change that. If you select the horse and then go to your Effect Controls panel, and if you don't see this, just go to Window, and it'll be down here. You can see we've got uh, a bunch of different customization controls here. Uh, we've got Primary Actions, so that's your graze, walk, trot, run, kick, and so on. And we've got Secondary Actions. These control more minor movements of the horse, like the nose and the eyes and ears. For most people, I think the majority of the time they're just going to need one action. So you would just go to first action and then you can change this to whatever you want. Let's just do trot. And you would set the duration here. I'll just do 10 seconds. Um, that should be plenty of time. I'll play that back. All right, and uh, I have this uh, picture that I imported earlier. This can be our background. I'll just bring that into the comp behind the horse. And uh, I'm gonna scale down the horse a little bit. I'll hit the P key to bring up position property and um, maybe move it up a little bit. And that's about where I want him to be. So all that we need to do is animate this horse's position to move across the frame. So I'm at frame zero, and I'm just going to get him into the starting position here. And I'll add a keyframe. And then I'll go forward about three seconds. 
There are lots of different ways to do this. Um, I usually just like to guess. I guess how far he's going to go at that trotting speed. And that's where I set my second keyframe. Uh, and I'll move him into position there. I'm holding down the shift key as I drag the value. That makes him go farther. And we can just play that back and see how that works. So you can see his feet are sliding backwards, which means the layer is not moving fast enough. That's okay, I rarely get it on the first try. So one way to fix that is just drag the keyframe to the left uh, to make this whole action shorter. And we can see how that goes. If you go frame by frame and just pay attention to the feet that are stationary, that are touching the ground, you can see that's pretty close. And you could perfect that even more if you want. But for this purpose, I think it's fine. So th that gives you a, a general idea of what you got to do. Obviously, if, you've, if you have multiple actions, um, you're going to want to have more keyframes here so that the horse changes speed for each action. And there's a whole lot more we could do with the scene, too, if we wanted to make this look nicer. Um, you could add a camera and um, have the camera track with the horse, and you could cut this picture up into many different pieces in Photoshop and then bring them in and build a, a 3D scene from it. Um, be on the lookout. if I, I might be making tutorials about how to do that in the near future. So if that is something you want to learn how to do, you can check back um, with the Creation Effects YouTube channel. Oh, and I should probably mention, uh, this comp is kind of a funky resolution. If I bring up the composition settings, um, you can see it's not HD or 4K. It's something weird. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You, you probably want to start a new comp and uh, bring your horse into that one. Um, but again, there are some, some rules you have to follow when doing that, so we'll go over that next. Let's look at a different horse now, uh, just so you can kind of see what's going on under the hood. I'll open this brown horse comp, and if I select that layer and hit the E key to reveal all the effects, uh, you can see we've got our controls up here, and then we've got this puppet effect. Um, this is our main effect, which controls how the horse moves. And you can see when it's selected, uh, you can see all the different pins on this mesh. So uh, real quick, just in case you aren't familiar, um, in less than 20 seconds I'll show you how the new advanced puppet effect works. I'm going to find a, uh, I'm going to drop in a horse image. And then with the puppet pin tool, I can add some pins. You can see that turns this into a mesh. And I'll put some more pins here to anchor these points so they don't move. And I'll put one on the head and then, as you can see, we can move that around and it just kind of warps the whole mesh. If I wanted to, you can go in here and you can change the position of each pin and uh, keyframe it. And uh, if you turn this to advanced, uh, that opens up some new parameters like scale and rotation. So uh, this wasn't possible with the old puppet pin tool. But with a newer advanced version of this effect, uh, you can do all kinds of things. And that's really what made this template possible. And now I said that this was our main effect, um, but you can see that there aren't any keyframes in that effect. And actually, all the keyframes are in these effects down here. So let me hide this one and unhide one of these. We'll look at Run. You can see it just has less than one second of keyframes on here. And if I play it back, you can see it's set to loop continuously. So all of the keyframe information is on these effects, which you can pretty much just ignore. And then this main effect um, takes the information from these effects and then applies it in this effect, depending on what action is, is being assigned at that time. So if you ever actually wanted to adjust uh, one of the actions by actually moving pins around, you would do that down here. If I double click this layer, that opens up a pre-comp. And actually you can find this pre-comp in here, pre-comps and images. And there's one for each horse. Here it is. So in here you can see we've got all the different body parts for the horse and they're all separate because they all need to be their own separate mesh because they move independently. So we've got all the different body part layers here and then we've got these two layers. 
target comp name, target layer name, and that just says brown horse, brown horse. Um, no, that's not the uh, the intro to my new children's book. These are actually kind of important. The reason they're important is because there's lots of expressions on many of these layers, and they all reference this layer, brown horse, inside this comp, brown horse. So that means if the layer name changes or the comp name changes, the expressions need to be updated so that this pre-comp stays connected to the right horse layer. Uh, so let me let me just show you. If you select this layer and go to your effect controls, and uh, I can play with some of these secondary actions here. I'll just uh, I'll open the mouth and I'll close the eye and maybe move an ear. So you can see what that looks like. And uh, if I go to my brown horse pre-comp, you can see that actually those secondary actions are being done inside this pre-comp. So that's why it's important that the expressions are pointing to the right comp and the right layer. And the way to update those expressions, um, you don't actually have to edit any code. I've made it really easy. You just type in the name of the comp in here, and then you type in the name of the layer down here. And you can just use your text tool to do that. So uh, when would you need to do that? Well, you would need to do it if you ever change the name of the layer. So if this became horse one, you can see we got all these expression errors. Um, or if you change the name of the comp, or if you ever copy this horse, and then you make a new composition, and you put it in there, change it to layer name so we can see. So now we've got horse one inside comp one. And right now, if I play with this mouth open control, you can see it doesn't do anything because those expressions are broken. But if we go to the pre-comp and we edit this text, we'll say comp one for the comp name and then horse one for the horse name. Now it's working. And then just remember to turn off those layers back in your pre-comp so you don't see them in your final horse. Let me show you one more example of when you would need to edit these layers. Um, we'll go to our comp one layer that we just made. And we've got this one, horse one. What if we wanted to make a herd? Well, you can do that pretty easily. You just duplicate the layer. I, I did command D or control D on Windows. And uh, let me zoom out. You can move this one back here. And let me make one more horse three and it looks like some kind of crazy animal choir or something but anyway um, we got three different horses here we'll just stick with these names if we go to source name you can see it's all the same source for these layers it's all this pre-comp here and we want separate pre-comps for each layer so what we would do is go into our brown horse find that pre-comp and duplicate it We'll open up a duplicate and we're going to edit these layers. Well, actually just the layer name. We already have this as comp one, so that's correct. This one should be horse two. And I'll hide my layers and I'll close that. And let's say we want this third horse uh, to be a different coat color. So we can open up, we'll do black horse and um, I'm going to duplicate that pre-comp and I'll open that up and I'm going to change the targets. This will be horse three and this will be comp one and I'll hide those layers. But you can see that that didn't work. So nothing's happening here. Um, the reason for that is because we haven't connected these pre-comps that we made with the layer. We did connect to the expressions. The expressions are good, but we need to swap out the source of these layers. So horse three, that's going to be our black horse. What we want to do is select this pre-comp in the project panel, and then we'll select the layer in our timeline. With them both selected, hold down the Alt or Option key, and then drag the pre-comp onto the layer. And you can see that swapped out the source, and we would need to do that with each of our horses. 
So this one should be Brown Horse Pre-Comp 2. And we can close that one's mouth. Just so you can see, these are independent of each other. So that's what you would do if you were creating a herd. Just remember that each horse always needs its own separate pre-comp and you need to connect them using that alt-drag technique. Um, so I just went over these first two rules. Rule number three has to do with effect orders. Uh, let me open up another horse. Again, I'll hit the E key and show all of our effects. Um, all that rule is saying is that you can't screw with the order of these effects, so don't drag this anywhere else. Um, and then we've got this line at the bottom, don't add effects above this line. So you can add effects to your horse. Um, in fact, you should. Any scene that you put this in, you'll probably want to do some color correction. So you would just go to effect and uh, you can add whatever color correction you want. You can do a curves. And uh, just make sure whatever new effect you add is below this line. Don't add effects above this line. All right, can we get to the fun stuff please now? I'm gonna open white horse, primary actions. We already did this first action. You just set your action and then you set your duration, how long you want it to go. Uh, these values are in seconds, so it's gonna trot for one second. But what if we want more? What if we want a second and third action? Well, duh, we open that up and we can make it, uh, let's make it jump. And you've got a, uh, an action duration for this action as well. Uh, we can set that to two seconds. And then we've got these other controls now. This one is first to second transition duration. Starting at the one second mark, it's going to transition from trot to jump. And what I mean by transition is that each pin is going to be moving um, from wherever it was at the end of trot to where it's supposed to be for the beginning of jump. Let's just see what that looks like. So you can see that's not very natural and that's going to happen a lot. Sometimes a leg will be moving this way at the end of one action and then at the beginning of another action it's supposed to be moving this way and it's just going to look funny when they transition like that. And that's why we've got these controls so that you can try to find the most natural transition that you can. You'll want to play with this one. Usually if, if the horse is moving slow, like you're going from a walk to a graze, you'd want this to be a higher number like 0.5 or 0.6. If the horse is moving really fast, like he's going from a gallop to a canter, you're probably going to want to make this much lower, like 0.2. And probably for trot to jump, 0.2 might work. Um, and then we've got second action, time shift. What this does, it just shifts the time for this action. So right now, at the end of the trot action, it's going to be transitioning to the very first frame of the jump action. But if I put 0.2 in there, now it's going to be transitioning to not the first frame of the jump action, but actually two tenths of a second into the jump action. So really you can transition to any part of an action, which makes it a lot more flexible. And if a transition doesn't look natural, all you gotta do is just play with this number and maybe play with this one a little bit. And usually you can just adjust it by one tenth. So try 0.2, if that doesn't work, try 0.3. And usually within two or three tries, you can find something that looks pretty good. Pretty much any one of these actions can be transitioned into another one. I mean, some of them may not make a lot of sense. You probably wouldn't go from a run to a graze, um, but you could. I won't judge you. And uh, you can just play with these controls until it looks natural. And also, uh, remember, you've got a duration control here too. So you can also change which frame these actions are ending at, which gives you more control to make that transition look, look more natural. Um, a couple things to note. You can have up to five actions. Um, I think that's plenty for most people. If you did need more, you can always just string multiple layers together. Um, and then also, I'm going to change this to graze. Graze is a little bit different because the horse isn't moving at a consistent pace. It actually takes a step and then stands still and then takes another step. 
and it's all very erratic, not erotic, but erratic. Um, so it can be tricky, and I know because I've tried to uh, animate this horse to move across the frame at the right speed in sync with this graze action. So what I did is I did all the hard work for you. You're welcome. You just go in here. In the extras folder, you've got this comp that says graze anchor point keyframes. And you got some instructions here, but basically all you gotta do, you select all of these keyframes on the anchor point property here, and you copy them, and you go to your first frame or wherever your graze action starts. And I'll hit the A key to reveal the anchor point, and I'll select it, and then I'll paste those keyframes. Um, now, if graze is not your first action, but it's your second or third, you got to take into account um, the duration of the previous actions as well as the duration of the transitions um, so that you know where to paste those keyframes. They're going to paste wherever your, your um, playhead is. Okay, moving on to the secondary action controls. Uh, a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, so I think I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Um, you can open the mouth and the lip curl and see what that does. That might be useful if you're um, animating your horse to talk. Combination of lip curl and opening the mouth. If you were to use uh, the graze action, opening the mouth and all of that is already built into it, so you wouldn't need to animate these. Uh, next we've got controls for both the, the near ear and the far ear. So you could do a, an ear twitch if you wanted to. I'll do this near ear. Um, I'll add a keyframe. I'll hit the U key so we can see it in here. So that's our first keyframe. Um, I'll just move forward about four frames. And I'll set this to something like negative 40. I'll go forward another four or five frames and I'll set this to, I don't know, 50. Then we'll go forward four frames and we'll do negative 10. Go forward three frames and do like three. So you can see I'm just going back and forth, crossing over zero each time. A couple of frames forward and I'll go back to zero and we can see what that looks like. That's okay. Uh, one thing I would do is to select all these keyframes, right click them, go to keyframe assistant and choose easy ease. And that'll make the motion a little smoother. And I would use easy ease keyframes on all of these probably. It just looks a little more natural. Um, you can close the eyes and you can make the nostrils flare open. Um, body mass is a fun one. You don't want to overdo it, but you can go about 15-20% in either direction. And it's a good way to add some variation if you've got multiple horses. You just make one horse a little fatter than the other. Shift weight, it does just what it says. So if he were running up a hill, you might want to shift his weight forward like that. Uh, lower front and lower rear. I'm not sure why you'd want to use that. I don't know. Maybe if he's tiptoeing. And high angle perspective, all that does is it raises the far legs. So it looks a little bit more like you're looking down on the horse. So if your horse is kind of lower in your scene, you might want to crank this up a little bit. Uh, tail swish is a useful one. You can turn it on or off here. You can see with it on, it does a variety of different tail swishing. Um, I'm not sure how long it lasts, maybe like 12 seconds and then it loops. So uh, you can turn it on or you can just go with whatever the default tail movement is for each action. And uh, you can keyframe this to turn on just for like two seconds if you want. And you can also change the timing so if there's a particular tail swish that you want, um, somewhere in that 12 second span, you can look for it uh, using this control. Um, hoof position. <clears throat> and also I forgot head position up here. If you select the secondary action controls up here, you'll notice that some crosshairs appear on all four of the hooves and on the head. And you can just drag these however you want, and it'll move the hoof or the head. I tried to make it as natural as possible. So you could do some fun stuff with that if you needed more control over the hooves. And I don't think I mentioned this. If you ever want to reset the position of these, 
all you do is click on the values and put in zero. And that goes for the head too. Um, also head tilt, that could be useful. And then finally, we've got some breathing controls here. You can adjust the intensity as well as the speed of the breathing. I want to end just by sharing some tips that I think will help you guys. I've made this uh, herd with just three horses. And if I play it back, you might notice that they're all stepping in sync with each other. Um, so we need to add some variation uh, to this. So let me go over some ways to do that. Normally to make them out of sync, you would adjust the time shift of the action. But you'll notice that the uh, first action doesn't have a time shift control. Uh, but one thing you can do is just offset the layer a little bit. So I can just slide this layer over 10 or 15 frames and then it will be out of sync with the other ones. Uh, some other things you might want to do, um, I would probably, I would raise one of their heads. Uh, you might want to change the body mass a little bit. Horses come in different shapes and sizes. Maybe uh, uh, lower the rear a little bit on some or raise the shoulders. Um, definitely turn on tail swish for some of them and just make sure that the time shift is different for each one so they're not all swishing their tails in sync with each other. Another thing you can do, which I've used a lot and it comes in really handy, is change the speed of an action. So I can make this horse walk faster or slower. And uh, a couple ways to do that. I, you could pre-compose this layer and then add a time stretch to the layer. Um, I've never done that, but I, I don't see why that wouldn't work. Um, usually what I do, I just stretch the keyframes. Probably the easiest way to do that is to select the layer and hit the U key to reveal all the keyframes. And there will be a lot of them. So uh, then I would just close all of these actions, even walk, close them all. Just so it's clear that we are only seeing the walk keyframes. And I'll open that back up. You can see they go just a little past the one second mark. I'll make this really big. And I'm just going to select by drawing a box around all of these keyframes. All right, now that they're all selected, I can easily stretch these in either direction to make it longer or shorter. All you do is hold down the Alt or the Option key and then click and drag on any of these last keyframes. So I stretch this out another 20 frames or so, so it'll be a much slower walk. And then uh, you're going to want to edit the motion path as well because he won't need to walk as far anymore because he's not walking as fast. Uh, some other things uh, I might recommend, uh, always turn on motion blur. It'll make the comp run slower, but uh, I think it looks nice. It doesn't really matter if they're walking. There's not going to be much blur, but definitely if they're running. Uh, you could add a shadow to these guys. I've, I've never actually done that, but... Uh, we can do that. I'll just go to layer, new, solid, and make it black. Um, I'll make it 3D and we'll use our mask tool to just draw a little circle. I'll hit the uh, F key to bring up the feather. And um, I'm going to rotate this on the X axis 90 degrees and I'll push it down to where my gray horse's feet are. Actually, I'll undo that. I'm just going to reveal the position property for the gray horse, hit the P key, select that, copy it, go to here, paste it. And then I can just parent this layer to the gray horse. And now that shadow will follow the gray horse. And um, I'm gonna scale it down to shift it over and reduce the opacity. It needs a little bit more work, but uh, you get the idea. Now, I want to make sure that you guys know all the ways that you can customize these guys. Um, you might want to make a change that is not in one of these controls. I mentioned that you can always just edit the actual pins. So if I bring up our main puppet effect, um, I, I said earlier that you can edit the pins in these actions. 
um, and that'll only affect those actions. But you could also just do it up here. You'll probably want to edit something in the body. So you can open that up, open up Deform, and then you've got all the different pins. I can move the shoulder. So if you select the shoulder, the pin gets highlighted, but you don't want to drag that pin because you can see what happened. It moved way down here, and that's because there are expressions on that position property. Uh, I'll undo that. The way to do it would actually be just to drag the value. And you're basically just shifting that pin over and it'll stay like that. Um, you could select a bunch of pins if you wanted to, just shift, select, and move a whole group of pins over. Or you can keyframe them or whatever you want to do, I don't know. Um, you may also want to edit uh, the photos of the horse. Maybe you have your own horse that you want to use. Or maybe you want to add, I don't like war paint or something to a horse. And you can do that. Um, you can either edit these original photos in Photoshop or you could just add it here. The only thing to remember, very important, you cannot add anything that's going to go past the boundaries of these shapes. It has to stay within the shape of the horse. So if we go to our, uh, our extras folder, we've got a few items in here, like the horse bridle. If you position this just right, uh, it doesn't go past the shape of the horse. Maybe just a little bit, and that's okay. But we also have this unicorn horn, and that obviously goes way out. Probably want to scale that down a little. So you cannot just add this unicorn horn to this comp and expect to have a unicorn over here. See, you can see how that got cut off. So to make a unicorn, you would actually have to attach the unicorn horn here. And um, I think I'm going to make a tutorial about that uh, eventually. So um, you would have to motion track the horse's head and attach the unicorn to it. But if your edits are going to stay within the shape of the horse, um, you can do that here. Um, I also have some reins here, and those do not stay within the horse. So you would have to edit that in this comp. And um, I would probably recommend doing that with uh, the puppet pin tool. You just add a pin on this side and a pin on this side and um, you would just animate these. This one would attach to this ring here and this one would go on the neck or the back here. And if you want a saddle it's the same thing. You'd have to animate it separately. Composite it on top of the horse in the other comp. Uh, some other stuff in here. Uh, we've got flying dirt. I use this in the demo video, um, so it's here if you want it. There's some instructions here on how to use it. And I think we are all done. So I hope you like the template. Be sure to go to creationeffects.com. You can see what other animals are there. Thanks for watching. Best of luck on your project. I'll see you at the next tutorial.